obviously narcissistic abuse and codependency seem to go hand in hand in many cases. So what, what is your experience of codependency? Like how would you define it? So I would define codependency as sacrificing your own feelings and needs in order to take care of someone else, putting their needs and their feelings first. So that comes with an element of people pleasing and also an element of self-sacrifice. And this tends to start in childhood. So often we have a parent who is an addict, an alcoholic, or abusive, or even a parent who has an illness, whether physical or mental, we can end up developing these codependency patterns, kind of like a survival mechanism. We learn to caretake that parent, the parent who has the problem, whatever that problem is. And then what happens is we get programmed with these patterns in childhood and this starts to feel normal. So then we go out into adulthood and we keep repeating these same patterns in our relationships. So maybe it doesn't look exactly the same, like maybe someone grew up with an alcoholic parent, later gets into a relationship with a narcissistic person. And that maybe that person isn't an alcoholic, but they have very similar patterns or the wound that's created through that relationship is very similar. Then the patterns of caretaking, self-sacrificing kick in. So that's very common. And I think oftentimes when we have this realization of what's going on or someone maybe mentions to us the word codependency, because that's what happened to me, it's like we want to reject that word. It sounds like shame. It sounds like blame. It sounds like weakness. It sounds like fault. And the reality is it's not your fault. It comes from the childhood programming and now we can change it. So that's why I like to tell people codependency is not a life sentence. Now, some people will live a whole lifetime like that. They might take these patterns to their grave. They might never develop the awareness of them, or maybe they have some awareness of these patterns, but they just can't change the patterns. So in that case, codependency can be a life sentence, but the awesome thing is it doesn't have to be. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. And I'm glad you mentioned like the tendency for a lot of us to maybe hear the word codependency and be like, ah, I don't want to, you know, don't want to hear that or don't want to identify with that. And um, I, I, I can relate to that because I, I grew up in an alcoholic family and uh, with a codependent mom and an alcoholic father. And, and, and I always right identified my mom as codependent because she always talked about how she was codependent and, you know, started reading like Al-Anon books and things like that. And, and then recognizing all those codependent tendencies in me as I grew up and, um, yeah, not wanting, not wanting that label, but, but then, um, you know, here we are. So now I love the topic. I love talking about it. It's, I think it's, it's a brilliant, um, thing to be aware of in, in ourselves. So I guess like, why do you think it's important for people to be aware of our tendencies to be codependent? Because if we're not aware of it, we can't change it. Like the first step to change anything is awareness of the problem. So until we identify that problem, nothing will change. We'll keep repeating those same patterns of codependency in our life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, like, okay, so let's say, right, for a lot of people, it could be hard to admit that we might have some of these patterns. And so if, if people are watching this right now and maybe are having, having that experience, like what, what would you say are some signs of avoiding recognizing our codependent tendencies? So the main sign is repetition compulsion. So that's where we keep getting into the same kinds of relationships. And like I said earlier, they might have a different face. Like it might be an alcoholic instead of a narcissist or vice versa, but we're going to find ourselves in similar situations with different faces and environmental contexts. But at the, at the core, that wound is the same and the patterns in us kick in that are the same. And the interesting thing about codependency is that we often don't notice this until we come face to face with another human. Now, this doesn't have to be in an intimate relationship. We can find these same patterns and dynamics in all kinds of human interactions. So it can show up at work. You can find yourself doing this with coworkers, with bosses, with employees, with colleagues. It can show up in other social situations, and it definitely shows up in the family. But so when we get into this repetition compulsion, what happens is that keeps us stuck in the victimhood. That keeps us stuck repeating those same stories. It keeps us powerless. 
and it keeps us with this external focus. So we end up going through all these situations and it's always, there's someone else and it's something happening from someone else. And until we identify, there's also something internal going on, nothing will change. And then the more we repeat those same situations, the more complex the PTSD is. So it's like we're digging a deeper hole and then there's a longer recovery process afterwards because the PTSD is like a one-off experience. It's one event that causes PTSD. The complex PTSD, which is a much bigger trust wound, many more symptoms, many more layers, that's from experiencing the trauma over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So we, we really want to avoid that as much as possible. But speaking from experience, I repeated this way too much. I want to save other people from going through that by just telling them, notice these patterns in yourself so that you don't have to repeat that. So you don't dig such a deep hole and it doesn't take you so long to recover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I too speak from experience. I, I have, while I don't have any real experiences of like being with like a narcissistic partner, I, I remember being so codependent with past partners and, um, when those relationships like broke off, it was like devastating, you know, like, and how, how deep of a hole I had sunk into and really lost my identity. And, and, and it was definitely a much longer journey up out of that hole, um, having gotten there. So I'm, I, that's what I just love about your work and, and your message. So thank you for, for being there for people in these times. So let's say people watching right now, some people are recognizing this is them. They're recognizing these tendencies. How do they start turning this around, this codependency around? So that very first part is the awareness. And then once we have that awareness, the work is the self-care work. And so we call this radical self-care radical because this is often brand new like all of these ideas of self-care of taking care of our needs and listening to our feelings and honoring those and setting boundaries and recognizing that we're allowed to do that in fact that's not selfish it's self-responsible so this is like a radical shift in in paradigm in the way that we perceive ourselves in the way that we perceive life so when we dig into this self-care work and we start to work on ourselves in this way, we're turning that focus inward. So now the focus is no longer external, which is the powerlessness, which is being a victim. And so we can transition from the victim stage into the survivor stage. As we're working through the self-care, that's the main work of that stage two when we become a survivor. So we're changing all these patterns, we're changing all of these old habits that we have, we're starting to take care of ourselves in a new way, and we're creating a whole new relationship with ourselves. And that, that really is what changes codependency when we change our relationship to ourself. Now, that doesn't mean that we can still be in some sort of toxic relationship and we change ourselves, and then suddenly the addict is no longer an addict or the alcoholic is no longer an alcoholic or the narcissist is no longer a narcissist. That usually doesn't happen. But what happens is when we get healthy and when we change our relationship to ourselves, we're no longer compatible in that relationship with that person and it becomes very clear. And so then it becomes a lot easier moving forward as we meet new friends, as we date new people, as we go to new work situations and social situations. We have a very different way of interacting with others because of the way that we're interacting with ourselves. And that's really where it all starts is with the self. That's the point of empowerment. And then as we go through this process of self-care, the radical self-care, that's months, if not years of work that we're doing. And I think it's probably always this project. You know, we're continually growing and changing and healing these patterns because things just keep coming up. It's kind of like more layers come up. Like it's a similar pattern that we recognize and we're working on. And then we keep discovering more and more and more layers to that as we have experiences in life. That's really how we recognize who we are, how we treat ourselves through our relationships with other people. It's really just a reflection of that. And we will continue to accept treatment behavior from others as long as we treat ourselves a little bit worse than they're treating us. Mm -hmm. So that's why everything changes when we change our relationship to ourselves. Thank you.